How's it going everyone? It's the final render here and welcome back to our Fallout 76 perma death run. This is part two of this video and we have got a good start going. We've got ourselves up to level five, we've got a full set of leather armor, we've got a couple guns, couple weapons and stuff and we are making nice progress. So what are we going to do today? Primarily what I think we need to do today is we need to start heading north. We're going to head north because we can start to do some of the early missions for the Wayward, which should give us some good XP, ready for leveling up. And also there's a couple of objective markers and stuff we can get along the way, ready to make things easier for the future. So, why don't we do that then? But before we do that, we will need to actually set up a camp so we can start to do the stuff we need to do in order to go north. So let's find a spot maybe on the riverbed or somewhere nearby where we can do that. Oh, but actually, before I forget, before I forget, there is a special little quest you can do here, isn't there? Kind of an unmarked quest, actually, where you can go and get yourself a 10mm pistol, and it is by going to a small hollowed-out tree stump on the other side of the river. So I think if you start there and then kind of make your way slowly up this hill, we should see a tree stump that actually has a container sticking out of it. Uh, you find out about this by looting a body in the diner over there, which is stuck in the fridge. Here we go. We got ourselves some caps, some 10 millimeter ammo and a 10 millimeter pistol. All right, fantastic. 10 millimeter pistol, much better than the pipe pistol. Much better. So we are going to go and favorite that right now. Go and do that right there. So now we have a 10 mil pistol and we've got 77 shots for it. That's genuinely not bad, actually. That's a good start. Like, the pipe pistols are okay, I guess. But you can do better than a pipe pistol. Trust me. Alright, so why don't we see if we can set up a camp then? For, so Because we need to do this for an actual mission, don't we? And then again, I would like a bit of flat ground. Because we do need to genuinely build some stuff. Uh, could we maybe build it on the road over here, maybe? Okay, so let's do this. So I'm very conscious right now of the fact that I will need to have a camp primarily for utility. As opposed to building in a nice location and stuff like that. So therefore, what I think would be the best thing for us is to go and build with one of these prefabs. And I think I want to go with the little log cabin prefab down here. And I like this because it gives us a nice amount of interior space. It's cheap to make and also it's quite small compared to some of the other ones. So therefore, we'll be able to pop this down in theory anywhere in the map. You know, we don't actually have issues with not being able to place it and stuff like that. Hopefully, if we just build it this way. Okay. That being said though. We do need to actually go and build our quest mission thing. Don't we? Quest mission thing. Yeah that's the word. <laughs> we need to go and build this crane radio tower. Yeah. So let's go and uh, pop that in there. And also give it a little bit of juice. We need to give it just a small little jenny down here. We'll use this nice small one for the atomic store. Obviously this, uh, this cabinet is from the atomic store. So if you're a new player and you don't see where that is. Then that's where it's from, you know, essentially you'll just have to go and buy it if you want this But you know, you can just build yourself a small square shack that'll work just as well. You don't need to go and do this Gorgeous, so now all we need to do is get more resources to build the rest of our benches and probably also learn the plans for the rest of the stuff And then we can just carry on doing what it is we do, but I do want to know actually Could we actually give ourselves any interest in weapon mods and stuff or make some new weapons? We can in theory make pipe pistols and stuff like that and scrap them down, but we don't have many resources for now. Let, let's not do stuff like that. Maybe we can add some stuff to our 10 mil or something, or a hunting rifle. Um, no, not really. We don't have the resources for any of that stuff. Oh well, is what it is. Hopefully we'll be able to build some stuff soon. But for now, that's base camp set up, and in order to complete the objective, what we need to do is go and plug in a hollow tape into a broadcast center. There happens to be one right at the top of this hill. So, that's pretty good timing, right? Let's go. Right, here we go at the radio tower. It's it's very weird being here. Not in nuclear winter, to say the least. Relay tower EMB127. Oh, my favorite one. All right, so let's get on in there. Oh, Scorched, hello. Let's back off a little bit, maybe. Don't want to get shot by them, necessarily. They're not always here, Scorched. You know, sometimes they just kind of wander off and chase mole rats and stuff like that but in this case we've got one right there he's oh there might be two actually behind the tank ah and there's people inside so let's do this uh carefully then i don't want to have to fight all of them necessarily there's one by the tank over there two by the tank and one inside all right let's just go this way and deal with the one inside 
We don't even need to be here long. We just need to go in, put the holotape into a computer terminal, and then get out. So, stairs are on this way. Can I see the dude? Ah! There's multiple inside. And they can smell me. Alright, let's back off then. Let's back off. What I think we might do. Oh, hello. Yep, just bail out a little bit there. I might see if we can get a grenade in there. I think I do have a grenade. I think I've got a baseball grenade. Yeah, i got two baseball grenades and a Molotov. We'll go with the baseball grenade. Molotovs can be a bit temperamental, to say the least. Got some vertebots coming in as well. Hello, guys. I don't know why I talk to them like they're sentient or whatever. So. Are they still in there? That is the question. Oh, hello. Okay, you know, one by itself we can take. Okay, there we go. That's that. That's great. Heal up a bit as well. That's the first impact we've used in this, actually. Oh, boy. Okay. Enough with the melee, then. We might just make it a general rule that if they're scorched, just go for the gun. You know, let's not try to save ammo and stuff like that. What are we saving it for, you know? Okay, so that was a good shot. You know, did some decent damage, but this is a level 1 hunting rifle, of course. So we're not really going to kill them a long distance just yet. Okay, there's one to the right-hand side. Oh, there's a couple, in fact. Alright, well, let's uh, try this. Nade out. Alright, we got at least one. Cool, he's nearly dead. And see if we can finish him off with a 10 mil. I don't want to use all the good 308 instantly. Cool. Alright, so that wasn't as sneaky beaky like as I wanted it to be. But you know what? We, we did okay. What's this leather left? Ah, see, that's a level 5 left leg. We should probably put that on immediately. Let's pop on that one. Yep, that is more resistance indeed. Okay, so we go from 9 ballistic and 18 energy to 9 ballistic and 20 energy. So not much difference, I suppose, but it all adds up. In fact, we should always be making new armor as soon as we get a new rank, i.e. every 5 levels. That's probably a good idea. Nice gear right there. Because if we can do that, then, you know, we're guaranteeing ourselves to have as much resistance as possible. But I do think I want to try to stick with leather for the longest time. Because leather is much lighter. So therefore, with light armor, you get more sneak. So let's see. Where is the broadcast tape? There we go. Activate the transmitter. Message Initiating broadcast pulse. Right, so now that's done, we can go back to our camp. Oh, we do have a raider chess piece here. 10 and 14. Raider chess pieces are not the best. 4 ballistic resistance on the lever, 10 energy. 10 ballistic and 4 energy. I right, see, this is an interesting challenge. Interesting thing, because this actually only is half a pound more in weight. Normally, Raider is dramatically heavier. So we are actually probably going to wear that. We're actually going to do it. It's only half a pound heavier, and it kind of swaps over the resistances. And right now, we're far more likely to get hit by ballistic weaponry rather than energy weaponry. So therefore, having this raider piece would actually be better for us in the immediate. Okay, and we're down. Sweet. And seeing as we made it all the way there, let's just go and fast travel back to the camp. We're going to be fast traveling a lot. Every opportunity we get to fast travel is an opportunity to not get shot. So that's what we're going to be doing. All right, so we made it back to our little house. The radio sequence is being broadcast. So we should actually get some guests turning up very soon. Good to know, right? Also learn some plans and stuff. Scrap the revolvers. Also scrap that 308 pi uh, pipe rifle. We don't need that. And here's our first customer. Hello there, matey. So this is obviously part of the Wastelander story. To where we need to attract some raiders. And hopefully we'll get the ones which will which were bullying the Wayward. Because we don't want them turning up. Whoa. You're not Crane. The hell's going on? Okay, so this is a dude who clearly is not a raider or anything. He seems to be perfectly fine. So let's go and just send this person all the way to the Wayward. Because then they're a customer of the Wayward and they'll be happy about that. 
because that's not the raiders we're looking for. We need to find the raiders who are bullying the wayward and tell them to go away. We don't necessarily want to kill them. That could be a problematic. Oh, hello. There they are, the free radicals. That's them, all right. And we do have some responder bots right here. I might talk to these guys quickly. And these responder bots might be able to help me if it goes bad. So, rumor is you've got information our boss wants. You tell me where this treasure is. Okay, so this dude thinks I know where the treasure is, but I'm not actually interested in that. What I need to do is just find out where they live, and then that'll be a good thing. Okay, so how about we trade? I'll tell you where the treasure is if you tell me where your gang is camped. Where we're camped? <laughs> okay. Okay, so I actually do have some stuff here. I can do a charisma check to say we've all been lied to. The treasure is not in Appalachia at all. It's in DC. Uh, that is something we could do. But I don't know what the right answer is. I know we don't want to go hostile on them. Because otherwise when we go to their camp later, they can shoot at you. And we definitely don't want that. So maybe I'll do the lie anyway. DC. Our camp's at West Virginia Lumber. Now I just... Okay, there we go. So yes, I lied to that one particular dude. But it meant we got out of there without getting hurt. There's a few things you can do there. You can fight them immediately. Or you can persuade his friend that something's up. I believe you can kind of tell him that his friend is going to betray him inevitably or something like that. And then they, those two start fighting each other. Something along those lines. I kind of forget if I'm entirely honest. But anyways, it, it's fun to do. But we got that done. So all we can do now is go back to the Wayward and we'll get the quest markers to go all the way up here to the West Virginia Lumber Co. So why don't we do that now? Let's just, let's just go straight to the Wayward. Duchess, Duchess, I found out where the bad raiders are coming from. So I told Duchess where the raiders are, and now we need to go and talk to these raiders. However, we can't just walk in, obviously, because they're raiders. So what we need to do is find out the password to get in, because there are some farmers over here who have been trading with the raiders, and they know the password to get in. Or we can talk to a scavenger over here, who I believe if we go to Deathclaw Island and steal him a Deathclaw egg, he will give us a stealth boy to sneak in. I think it's pretty obvious what I'm going to be doing. And that is, I am going to be going to the farmers and getting the password. That is much safer and easier way to go, don't you think? Before we head there, though, I do need to go and make my way over here. Investigate the corpse at the isolated cabin. We're going to be going there because that will give us the quest which activates the ability to go and get our shelter from Vault 51. And Vault 51 is... Pretty much right next door to the vault tech, um, not to the um, West Virginia Lumber Co. So if we go and start this quest, we'll get a bunch of easy XP just for turning up. So that's definitely worth doing if you're doing this quest at the same time. You can just get an easy bit of XP just by walking over. And that's obviously pretty new to the game. Only in the last few months or so did they add that. So good to know that that's there. Ooh, we've got Mr. Squeeze over here. Okay, this is actually worth paying a visit to actually so we could buy lemonade for two caps each that's pretty good or we can buy the plan for lemonade for 120 caps each uh lemonade is actually a really good drink to get you know you can just pop that on your hot bar whenever your ap isn't refreshing very quick and then just drinking it will mean your action points come back much quicker i don't know if we can get the plan though the plan's a little too pricey i think we'll just buy a couple bits of lemonade for like 10 caps there we go we'll get the plan later and then we'll put the lemonade on a hot bar Really good idea to actually try to keep myself in good condition with my food and drink. Because having full thirst and uh, full hunger, or not being thirsty or hungry I should say, actually does get you some really good benefits actually. So why don't we go and fully eat and drink everything we need. And uh, purified water is also really good for healing of course. We can actually see our effects. And uh, yeah, fully fed we get an extra strength and also maximum HP. And also damage disease resistance, which is pretty good. And also, uh, fully hydrated, we get endurance. So very, very good. It's generally a good idea to keep on top of that. However, in 76, it is not a requirement anymore. It used to be the case that if you didn't eat or drink, you would lose AP. But the thing is, it wasn't hard to maintain your health by eating and drinking. It wasn't hard to do that. So it was just kind of more annoying rather than fun. But now, it's actually, you get a bonus if you do it. So it's worth doing. Trust me. No, isolated cabin discovered. Okay, so as I said, this is an important quest. It's been added fairly recently, but we've got this dude right here. Vault 51 Overseer. We can go into there, 
and then we can actually find out some stuff about getting a camp shelter. Pretty important to do, really, because it's easy XP, as I mentioned. So grab those, and uh, anything else in here? Some duct tape, fantastic. And also, I can't help but notice that we do have that farm over there, which I mentioned specifically and said to avoid, because it's full of scorched wood guns. I now have guns and full set of armor. I think it might be an idea to go in, kill a couple of those guys. Not only will we get the XP, but also, hopefully we can get some more hunting rifles. And I need hunting rifles to scrap. Because if I can get myself a really decent scope, or even a suppressor, you know, like R and Jesus, praise be, I might actually be able to do alright in this entire playthrough. <laughs> Because we're all about sneak and stealth, aren't we? So if we can get ourselves a suppressor and a scope, then we're laughing, right? Oh, there's one scorched over there. Now, as we said, I think it might be an idea that whenever they're scorched, just to go in with the guns, you know, let's not try to do the melee and stuff to save ammo. Because they are dangerous. They are genuinely dangerous at this early level. So let's see how close we can get. We might be able to get like a critical headshot on the dude. Okay, well, he saw me, I think. We're cautious. Okay, back off a bit. We do still have baseball grenades. Could just throw one over there. And he saw me. Fantastic. Totally did not want to target the grenade there. Thanks, Bats. But okay. What did he have? He had a pipe bolt action pistol. Okay, that's not ideal. But what else is in here then? Cutting boards and stuff? Oh, isn't that fantastic? A bottom paddler. But I don't think there's actually many more items to loot, but I could have sworn this place used to be full of bad guys. Yeah, but I guess not. We do have another 10 mil pistol though. That's good. That is good. And of course we do have Cheswick, I think his name is. There's a lovely little kitty here. And uh, in the first uh, edition of the game, you know, before Wastelanders came out, this cat was dead. However, when Wastelanders came out, they added him alive as Cheswick the second. So that's very nice. We don't want to see kitty cats being harmed. But we do have some more guys over there. So let's see. Nice. Good headshot right there. Okay. Nearly got that guy. Was pretty close there. Desk fans and typewriters. Most valuable of resources here in the Wasteland, of course. They contain screws. Oh, okay. So he's just gone in the house. I heard the door. And, uh... Are they shooting the cat? He is! You absolute monster! Oh, he can take it. He's a tough cookie. Oh, Cheswick. What did he do to you, Cheswick? I can't believe that guy just ran in and started shooting the cat. <laughs> what a monster. Yeah. Sausage face. Okay, well, we got some more dead ghouls then. Or scorch, sorry. Not ghouls. What have we got on them? I'm hoping some of them have hunting rifles. Oh, Hello. Nice headshot right there. There we go. That was a concentrated fire kicking in. Where is he? Don't you hate it when you kill someone you don't know where they were? Yeah, okay. They generally didn't have anything on them at all. Like, literally nothing. And we've got some more in the barn over here. I suppose also something that makes this difficult, as opposed to, say, a Fallout 4 permadeath run or something like that, is that enemies always respawn in this. Whereas in Fallout 4 Survival, there is an element of clearing out a settlement. Nice shot. But that's obviously not a thing here. You know, as soon as we leave, with enough time, not long, they will eventually all respawn. So we've got to be on our toes quite a lot. And we didn't get a single hunting rifle in there. Well, that is a huge shame, isn't it, people? Okay, let's jump on down and see if we can scrap some of the items we have got. Now, we've got ourselves a 10 mil pistol there. Uh, they're both level 5, so let's scrap the new one. The original one actually had more. Like duration bar on it. And we got all these pipe bolt actions. Now, it might be the case. It generally might be the case that we end up with a better sniper pipe bolt action before we get a decent hunting one. So we do need to keep that in mind, you know. Just because we have a hunting rifle, which does do more damage, we might get better mods for a sniper one. Which is a 308 pipe rifle. So let's see what we got. There was a little bit of a glitch there to where we weren't actually able to see what we're actually unlocking, but can we also do anything to our armor? I'm wondering. We have actually got up to level 5, so in theory we can wear level 5 armor, which is pretty awesome, right? But let's see. It is in light armor. Yeah, okay. So, it is better. It's twice as good, in fact. The question is, though, is it going to be that 
good in the grand scheme of things. But then again, you know, I did mention earlier that we do really need to worry about this early stage of the game. So yeah, let's just make a full set of level 5 armor. Not including the chest, of course, because we've got that raider chest. So yeah, excellent stuff. We've now got new armor bits. Let's go and pop them on and see what our resistances and stuff are like then. So, armor. Currently, we're sitting at 15 ballistic resistance and 14 energy. So, let's go swap these over. 15 and 14 we were on. Now, we're on 18 and 20. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. Didn't actually take that many resources. And, of course, we can now scrap the old ones to learn mods and stuff. So, let's do that. What we really need is to get shadowed stuff. If we can get shadowed stuff, then we're definitely going to have an easier time sneaking around. But, obviously... You don't know any mods and stuff. We can boil them. Oh, that's an idea, actually. Uh, what happens to it? We get one extra ballistic and two extra... Oh, no, just one extra energy. Well, I mean, I suppose so, right? We've got some resources. Let's do it to two of the pieces, shall we? Let's do it to the arms. No, no reason why the arms specifically. Let's do it to the arms. And I presume we can't mod our raider chest anymore. We can. We can give it welded. All right, sweet. Okay, that gives us an extra three ballistic resistance and an extra one energy. Not much energy resistance at all, but the leather pieces more than make up for that. So sweet. We've now got some better armor. Let's carry on doing what we were doing, shall we? I right, got some more scorched over there, which appear to have a fight with an eyebot. Okay, why don't we see if we can deal with these quickly and easily? We've got some frag grenades now. Maybe if we can get them all bunched up. We can get them all killed easily. And then we won't have to worry about fighting them. Alright, we've got at least one of them. But I don't know how many there are. There's There were two, for definite. But I don't know how many altogether. Ah, see, there's one in there. Let's test this pistol. There we go. Good damage right there. Good damage. Dropped him in one shot. Not bad. Just like the hunting rifle. Alright, so what about the other one? There was one round the back. I don't know if we hit him with the grenade. He might be a little bit hurt. Quest out of Bureau of Tourism. That, I believe, is to listen to the, the Grafton station. I have no idea where this last one's gone. Ah, there he is, over there. Uh, yeah, it looks like he has been hurt a little bit. Could have been from the eye bot, could have been from the grenade. But let's see if we can... There we go, take it out with a 10 mil. Nice, not bad. Okay, so what weapons did these guys have? This guy didn't have anything. Well, that's unfortunate. What about in here? Do you have anything? You got a pipe wrench. Well, that's not good. But there are some 308 rounds in there. Not bad. Oh, and all, along with a new pistol right there. Let's go check that one out, actually. What's that one got? Oh, this one already has. This one already has a butt on it. Okay. That's cool. So this is a rifle one. Much better for a single shot weapon after all. I wish I'd found this before, you know, crafting the other one and then modding it and stuff like that. Because in this one, you can't take the mods off and put them onto other weapons and stuff, which is a shame. You can buy mods and put them onto other weapons, but you can't take a mod off once it's on. So unfortunately, I can't just take that calibrated receiver and pop it onto this new here rifle one. So that's a huge shame. But you know what? We got ourselves a... 308 rifle now and hopefully we'll find a couple more and get a scope we're far more likely to find scopes for these ones than the hunting rifles right now oh looky here we've got a lot of kitties over here oh i love the fact that there are like roman cats and stuff inside appalachia that's a really nice fun touch but anyways we're safe enough now we have made it over to anchor farm look at me i'm actually running and you know not creeping and stuff fancy that it takes forever to get anywhere when you're playing this permadeath mode this is anchor farm then the Anchor Farm is a pretty important location because this is the first kind of real kind of speech checks that matter in this case because this can make a big difference between a massive gunfight later on or, you know, just being able to just walk through the front gates with no questions asked. So, what we need to do, we need to talk to the bloke who lives in here for these farmers have been trading with the raiders at the West Virginia Lumber Co. So they know how to get in and we need the password which they use to get in. We could also pill for their sugar and stuff like that. Oh, hello. Who are you? That's child. Not interested in child. We're interested in human. Human man. Not that children are human. Okay. 
Uh, do you remember earlier on, I mentioned that I found some buff out, and I was very happy I found that buff out? It's for this reason, because I believe there is a strength check here, in order to get the password quite easily. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to take this buff out right there. Don't do drugs, kids. And now we should be able to pass the strength check. Face up the road. Maybe you should give it a visit. West Virginia, no. Don't know anything about that. Oh, he knows about now that I'd West like Virginia Lumber Co. All right, you saw his facial expression change. Okay, see, here we go. Strength three. Sounds like you know something. But then again, there's also perception ones and charisma ones. We don't have either of those, but we do have strength. So let's no, go. No, no, no. Not the well, nicest option, I know. We worked out a deal with them. So but we have got that speech check done. Okay, so good stuff. Okay, there we go. So I was actually able to persuade the dude to also give me some resources as well. You know, again, really just was very rude to that guy and just completely shook him down. But hey, we should actually be able to get some supplies and stuff from them later on as well. So yeah, uh, Hunter for Hire, this is it, isn't it? Yeah. That's where we're going to go. And also, let's uh, <laughs> let's take off some of the other quests that we're not doing, shall we? Oh, looky over here. We found the Alice in Wonderland party. Oh, isn't that nice? Now, this actually is a really good location to actually... Pay, pay a little visit to at the start of the game because right here you will see we have some cranberries. Now let's take these cranberries because cranberries of course are used in making cranberry food obviously that makes total sense render but the cranberry food is actually used to manufacture things which give you experience. So in this case I believe, let's put our survival tent down, we can make cranberry cobbler and cranberry cobbler gives us 5% extra XP for an hour or so, I think. We should be able to make it. We might need some extra ingredients, but let's go and see. I prepared cranberry cobbler right there. One cranberries and just wood. Okay, fantastic. And this gives us a bonus 5% XP for, I believe, an hour. So that's really, really good to take. Let's go and grab that right there. And seeing as we have got ourselves a survival tent just right now, why don't we also take a quick rest so that we can get all of our buffs from being slept and stuff like that. Slept? Yeah, that's the word. We got ourselves a little farm on the left here. I believe this place spawns super mutants. That'll be the first super mutants we've seen in the game, if so. And I really don't want to have to bother with them. Oh no, it's scorched. Okay, the other farm nearby. Um, there's one somewhere else that I believe has super mutants. Okay. Or maybe it's just a potential spawn. I honestly have no idea. But we can deal with some Scorched. Again, the more rifles and stuff we get, the more mods we learn, the more powerful we will become. And we've just leveled up just by discovering the place. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Let's, um... Well, actually, let's not do our levels first because this isn't an offline game. We will get shot at. All right, so hello. Wow, that was a miss. All right, well, let's get a grenade in there, seeing as there's two of them. Got one, I think, maybe. Okay, this gun's really not very accurate, actually, is it, in the mats? Let's uh, go for the old manual. And there's more than I thought. All right, so let's quickly deal with this dude right by us. Hello. Okay, he's dead. He's only got a pitchfork, so he's not that dangerous. Cool. None of them are that dangerous, actually, now I think about it. Health bar still looking good. But at least these guys definitely have guns, which we can break down. There we go. Okay, I think that's all of them. And we do have plenty of bolt pistols. Fantastic. If we can get some more of those, we might be able to upgrade our rifle one. Yep, they've all got decent ones. Okay, fair enough. Happy to know. Let's break down these weapons then. Is it going to give us a notification this time? It's not. Okay. A little bit of a glitch there. Uh, yeah, so we'll just scrap those ones down. And also, I did find another hunting rifle. So now we've got a level 5 hunting rifle, which is pretty darn sweet. And we did learn something from the other one as well, so fantastic to know that. Okay, so I wonder what we can make then. There's no weapons mention to check, but we do... Have a level up. Okay, so there's no new levels at this one. I believe I'm level 7 now, question mark. Because you get those packs every two levels, I believe, at the start. Or is it one level? Oh, we're on level 7, so it might be level 2 levels. Okay. I forget, anyways. Alright, so what do we get? Another rank of serendipity. Perfect, that's fantastic. Licensed plumber. Slow metabolism. Okay. 
So, why did June become an architect? To remove the glass ceiling. Very funny game. Okay, so I got another rank of serendipity, right? So let's naturally invest that level into there. And then we can pick a different card. Let's see. We should have a couple new ones now, actually. Let's go through these. Yep, we've got things like Gladiator and stuff now. We might as well put that on, even though we're not going to be using it for that much longer. I've got some lock picking and stuff. I probably won't really bother with lock picking too much in this. However, hacking I might do because you can turn off turrets and stuff like that, which will be very useful. Uh, we also got some more endurance ones. They're not that exciting. Surprisingly, you'd think they'd be more useful in a run like this, but not really, no. Also got like pharmacy things and stuff. There's the hacking one. We'll definitely throw that on. Yeah, okay. So nothing too useful that I can pick. But if I had to pick one, I would say maybe we should go for something like Lone Wanderer, because the second rank will boost our resistance even more to 15 and 20. Now, I know that's not much, but it all adds up, you know what I mean? So, what I think we'll do, I think we'll take that card, and then next level, we will rank that up to a level 3, because otherwise we won't be able to use it. So, let's pop on Slugger, because, you know, we might as well, we have it, and also Intelligence, Licensed Plumber. Let's go and grab that one. We're probably not going to benefit from it too much because it's actually better at this stage of the game to just pick up new weapons rather than repair them. But, you know, it is what it is. And we can rank up Serendipity to level 2. That's really good. So now, while we're below 30% health, we gain a 30% chance to avoid all damage. That could really save our skin one day. Hopefully it will. But then again, hopefully it won't. You know, it'd be nice to know if it's working. It's the point I'm making. <laughs> Let's carry on. Ooh, carrots. Here we go, people. We made it to Vault 51. Oh, I remember when they added this to the game. They just added it in, like, a hot fix, and everyone was like, what? There's an extra vault here. My god. Uh, this is obviously the vault where um, Nuclear Winter is set in Vault 51. But uh, we're not going to be worrying about that. You can't even go in that vault. But what we do want to do, besides looting all the plastic and the, sh and the cereal, is head into this shelter. We go into this shelter, and then we can actually claim our very own shelter, which is actually a quest. So that will get us a lot of XP. Which is absolutely fantastic, right? Quest started home expansion. Go and claim your shelter. Just got to talk to this robot right here. Okay, we spoke to Mr. Clark, and now we can just go and register. Uh, it's actually quite interesting if you read the terminals and stuff like that here, and actually dig a little bit into this room and this little side quest, because there is reason to believe, a little bit of reason to believe, that this robot is actually under the influence of Zax. And Zax is the robot who is currently, or say the robot, he is the computer AI who is currently controlling Vault 51. And Zax is a bit psychotic, to say the least. So, but there is reason to believe that that's what's going on in here. So yeah, it's all in here. If you grab the um, password that was in that little container over there, you can access Ruben's logs. And then you can read a little bit about how potentially this robot may be under the influence of Zax. And Zax is officially out of the vault. You know, like Skynet's gone totally self-aware and stuff like that. But besides that, this terminal is just about, you know, teaching you about shelters. And shelters, of course, not really essential to gameplay at all. It's probably just like a fun thing for the most part. But you know what? We can go and do that, and we can get ourselves a shelter. Now we just got to speak to Mr. Clark, who will give us said shelter. Now we're like registered. Oh, he's even going to give us some junk and stuff like that. That's fantastic. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. There's nothing else I need to know. There we go. We get 60 caps for doing that. Pretty sweet. We've also got, like, some cooking and stuff like that if we need to do anything like that. So spoil meat on the table. Oh, isn't that lovely? So, yeah, what did we get from that? We got some stuff. We got our vault shelter. And 162 XP. Okay, it's not much XP, but seeing as we're in this neck of the woods anyway, that's pretty sweet, isn't it? So now we just got to go into the West Virginia Lumber Co. to where we will need to persuade the people who are in there to leave the wayward alone. But anyways, I think that's enough for this part. This one might be a bit shorter. Uh, I actually have been recording these back to back. So if you left a comment on the first part, I actually haven't seen those comments. But hopefully you have been enjoying the videos. And I can't wait to get on with part three, where we'll actually enter the West Virginia Lumber Co. and see what we can do. And then after that, we might even make the trip into Morgantown to carry on the kind of main quest, so to speak, where there'll be lots and lots of Scorched, lots and lots of weapons to scavenge, and lots and lots of cool things to get our pilferous fingers on. But anyways, I can't wait to see you then. I've been the final render, and you've been the audience. Until next time, farewell. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. 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 
thank you to all of our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Special thank you to our Level 3 YouTube members, which currently consists of Psycho Girl, Katrina McKenna, and Raven's Roost. 